In the mid to late 80s, Epix was known for their games series. Games like Summer Games, World Games, California Games. These were Olympiad-style games where you would compete in multiple games, attempting to gain the best overall score in the game and win the grand prize of Carpal Tunnel Syndrome and Early Onset Arthritis. But one huge thing all of these had in common was that they were set on Earth, using real-life sports and events. Come on, this was the age of the home computer, where anything was possible. Screw Real Life, Enter Purple Saturn Day, published by Epix and developed by ERE Informatique's Exos label. This was the same team of French dudes who created Captain Blood and Cult, aka Chamber of the Psy-Mutant Priestess. They were tasked with making sci-fi games that were too bizarre for the regular ERE brand, and just looking at the cover art, I'd say that's pretty obvious. I mean, this is just awesome. It's like a B-movie convention and a, an even trippier B-movie convention got together and had trippy acid-fueled children for the final victor, a queen's intimate embrace. Oh yeah. Race to the stars, streak round Saturn, make the mind one, master the tronic platform. Wait, master the tronic platform? A nod towards master tronic, perhaps? Alrighty, let's just go ahead and take a look at the contents of the PC version. And yes, it was available for other machines like the Amiga, Atari ST, Amstrad CPC, and even the Sinclair ZX Spectrum, but I'll be looking at the DOS PC version because it's what I own and because I am 100% partially biased. Inside, you'll find a 3.5-inch double-density floppy disk containing the day of purpley gas giant awesomeness as well as a thin manual which, strangely, is just too tall to fit inside of the box, so it has to be scrunched up to fit inside. That kind of quality control does not strike me as a good omen of things to come. The manual starts off with the fantastically esoteric story, which basically confirms the suspicion that this is, in fact, a European game from the 80s. Apparently, the game is also set in the same universe as the other Exos games, like Captain Blood. After the Solar Wars in that game, Saturn was made the center of system affairs. So on the first day of the new year on Saturn, the Day of Purple Dawning, a grand set of events take place, followed by the strange chant of Ata Ata Hoglo Hulu, Ata Ata Hoglo Hulu, Hamtot Zoglo Hulu, Netflix Vimeo Blip, and so on. The rest of the manual goes over the basics of each of the four mini-games within the game, along with random news articles and ads pertinent to the citizens of Saturn. Lots of alien terms and campy sci-fi dialogue abound. They're silly and bizarre, just like the game itself, so they only serve to augment the experience that is Purple Saturn Day. And finally, you have a listing of each of the opponents you will encounter in the game, hailing from various parts of the galaxy. Some of them look kind of cool, but then you have some that just look like someone started off with something somewhat unique, ran out of inspiration, and then just plopped a face on it so he could go home and drink himself into oblivion. Poor lazy artist. On starting the game, you're greeted with a simple options screen, followed by the title and the credits, letting you know that yes, you have installed and are running the proper game. You're then taken to the colorific podium menu, where you can choose to either practice any of the four games, or you can just start the tournament immediately by clicking this triangular thing. You can play them in any order that you choose, but I'll just start with Ring Pursuit. In Ring Pursuit, you are not pursuing rings like some coked-up hedgehog. Now nah, it's much simpler than that. It's essentially a slalom race between you and an opponent through the rings of Saturn. You just move left and right, dodging rocks and space junk, moving past the left and right of these yellow and red markers. If you happen to stay ahead for most of the race and gather more points than your opponent by slaloming correctly, a winner will be you, even if you don't pass the finish line first. Although you can use a joystick or even a keyboard for this and the other games, I highly recommend using the mouse. It just felt easier and more natural to finely tune my velocity and direction simultaneously and on the fly. The next game is Tronic Slider, which is kind of a cross between Ball Blazer and Battle Zone. Kind of. You and an opponent control a hovering vehicle with the ability to turn at 90 degree angles inside a confined playfield. The goal is to destroy these roaming energy balls by shooting them and then collecting their scattered remains. Whoever gathers the most energy before time runs out wins. And it's sort of fun at first, but I felt it just went on for a few minutes too long. I mean, I guess you could make the same complaint about any of these games. Some of them just seem to drag on. But this one especially is just annoying because there's just not much here. There are some other variables like smashing into your opponent to make him lose energy, but to me it just felt too limited in scope for such a lengthy game and I started getting bored. 
The third game is Brain Bowler. While the first two games were straightforward enough to get without much practice, this one is very hard to wrap your mind around until you play it a few times at least. It can be described and will be described and is being described as a cosmic electrician puzzle game. You're faced with a giant brain, electrical brain, so a brain with two sides, the right side for you and the left for your opponent. Controlling some sort of freakish cursor, the goal is to light up all of these pin things, activating your side of the brain. This is accomplished by opening and closing gates and switches, and collecting charges from these condensers. Once you gather a charge, you can light a pin by bowling your cursor into it. Then you'll need to have one of your electrical charges pass over it to light it permanently. Do this for all of your pins before your opponent, and you win. It's much more complicated than all the other games, but it's certainly not impossible. But the controls in Brain Bowler are just awkward. I guess the movement of your polygonal cursor thing is supposed to mimic the motion of tossing a bowling ball down a lane, but it just never felt intuitive to me, like something was constantly disconnected. The only other gameplay element is Sabotage, where you and your opponent can actually finagle with the opposite brain side to completely screw things up, even stealing condenser charges. Both cursors will also bump against each other when they make contact, so you're actually playing defense along with offense when things really get heated. It eventually becomes fun, but it's just odd. The final event is Time Jump. You take control of a time spring space catapult or something, launch yourself into the cosmos, and release sparks, collecting as many sparks as you can to grab enough energy to make another time jump. Make more jumps and longer jumps than your opponent to win. Very simple, at least on the surface. It does bring a lot of questions to mind about some serious cosmological stuff, like uh, how do I get back home? Where the balls am I? What do sparks have to do with traveling through space-time? What the frick is this? Oh, for that matter, why does Saturn have a population? Whatever, it is what it is, take it or leave it. After all of these events are completed, somebody will be declared the winner, and then it's off to see the queen for your reward. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Alright, I think I need a cigarette after that. And so ends Purple Saturn Day. It's no wonder it wasn't included in the Epic's Games series under the name Galactic Games or something, because honestly, it's just too frickin' weird for most people. I mean, pretty much everyone's familiar and comfortable enough with running, skiing, and biking, but time jumping, brain pathway manipulation, and hovering energy catching? Yeah, not exactly mainstream stuff. But it's by no means a bad game. It's got awesome graphics, some fun mini-games, and a bizarre little universe with a bizarre little atmosphere. It really could benefit from some multiplayer of some kind because, well, that would just be cool. And some music or sound other than annoying bleeps and squeals would be alright, but oh well. I haven't played the other ports of the game, so I'm not sure how different those are. I'd still recommend giving Purple Saturn Day a try if you enjoy other Olympiad-style games and are ready for something a little bit different, or if you're just somebody who is strangely drawn to strangeness. 